Okay, so this outfit is a disaster. Hey everyone, it's me, X Canadensis. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I post new doll related videos almost every single day. And today's video I am so excited about because we are going to be doing an unboxing, review, and comparison of the two newest Cleo Denial dolls from Monster High. I got both of these at Target last week and I will put a link in the description to the video where you can watch me find them in the store as well as a haul if you'd like to see it. And these are such strong cool designs. I was trying to think like which is my favorite new Cleo doll and I couldn't pinpoint which one I liked better so I thought it would be fun to do both of them in a video together. So let's see which one is better. So starting off I'm going to show you the packaging for Monster Ball Cleo because I feel like Monster Ball just has a more interesting package in general. So this is what her packaging looks like. It's a bit difficult to catch on camera because my studio light wants to reflect off of this really cool disco ball. So there's the side of a disco ball here which is really interesting. I really like the use of the third dimension in the packaging and it's just like this embossed plastic and it's just really pretty. It says Monster High here. Really cute art in the corner and we have a photograph of the dolls all together here. I just noticed that, that is so cute. It says Monster Ball right here, which is the name of the line. And then Cleo looking gorgeous in the packaging. You can see more of the little like sequins, what do you call these little mirror squares on the disco ball. And then on the back of the packaging, you can see this absolutely stunning artwork. I really hope this is used on merchandise or something because wow. Monster Ball is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then here we have Cleo's name on a disco ball and it says her scare accessories. Can we take this one back to the drawing board, please? I don't like this one, uh, but it's the Eye of Horrors purse and a compact. Her favorite ballroom snack is scary cupcakes and her monster photo prop is a fabulous tiara and scepter. That's not a photo prop. I feel like that's just what she showed up in, but uh, that's cute that Monster High is trying to give her an excuse there. <laughs> and then on the bottom of the packaging, this is the barcode in case you guys want to try to scan that in store. Alrighty, now let's take a look at Skultimate Secrets Cleo's packaging. So, I mean, Skultimate Secrets dolls all come with basically the same packaging, but different colors depending on your character. I really like Cleo's color scheme. I'm not a fan of yellow or orange, but... Uh, like those are my least favorite colors actually but when they look good together they look good together and this is absolutely beautiful i especially like this shade of orange it like really meshes well with the gold and the yellow and then of course you have this really nice see-through area because that's what um this theme is it's firidescent which is sculptman secret series 2 beautiful artwork right here and then on the back you can see the rest of the series so so far i have everyone but frankie uh, but I haven't reviewed any of them yet, so this is our first Skultimate Secret Series 2 review. And then here's the barcode for anyone who needs it. All right, let's unbox them. This is a very standard unboxing process, but I don't know. Maybe 10 years from now, it'll be interesting to see them unboxed, so I'm including the time lapses. Enjoy. It was actually extremely difficult to get Cleo's head out. Monster Ball Cleo is now out of the packaging, and oh my god, she looks so good on camera. She's so beautiful, uh, but we need to get Skultimate Secrets Series 2 out now as well, so um, I haven't opened the door yet, so let's see. Pretty! Oh my gosh, okay. She is very interesting. Her color scheme is so different. So now we just need to cut a couple of ties to free our doll. So much easier because you can't see her, but at the same time, I desperately wish you could see her from the store because like who knows what your doll's gonna look like you know so it's kind of scary because there are issues still not nearly as bad as generation one monster high but there's still issues with um face ultimate secrets cleo is out of the packaging and she's standing over here with monster ball and we're gonna start off by opening up all of Skultimate secrets uh, little accessories. I don't know. It's exciting to see like what they all are because I haven't really spoiled much. I've seen some things floating around, but I've already been really surprised as I was unboxing her by her shoes. They have a gradient paint, which I was not expecting. And I love the little wings. Those are so cool. This doll is beautiful. Her makeup is awesome. Um, and then her locker, I haven't seen too much talked about with it, but I love that in between the bandage wraps on the background, there's little jewels because that is what ancient Egyptian people would actually do. They would put like trinkets throughout the wrappings. So I think that's a really nice detail. <laughs> very macabre, very monster high for sure. And then we have the little locker door. So we've got string lights that are pyramids, little gems. We've got this really cute scarab mirror that says treasure yourself with a little heart gem with bandages on it. We've got a selfie stick and I think 
there's a monster high doll that actually comes with one like this and i love the little skelet shaped ring light please sell this monster high we will buy it and then we have the little scarab beetles i think these are in the show i haven't i'm not very caught up on the new show but i think these are little helpers in the show and then i wonder if she comes with these earrings or not i don't know we've got a little bastet statue i believe um a little sarcophagus just a lot of jewelry and different trinkets on this one and then down here we have two canopic jars We've got a hint at his set here, which I'm so excited about. I love his set. And then we've got a little compact. This is a little perfume. We've got some face gems, which does that mean Cleo's face gem is not like a tat? I always wondered about that. Is she just putting that on in Gen 1 or is that like anatomical? I don't know. Um, anyway. All right. So now let's check out what's in here. So one of the big gimmicks with this big locker thing is that you're supposed to do a color reveal with the key. So this key is covered in a paint coating. A metallic paint coating and if you put it in water it'll come off um but you can also just look here so it looks like this is the light yellow also the keys all open like i can open every hole with this key so you don't really got to do all that but it is very cute and if you'd like to see it in action i have other ultimate secrets reviews the bag feels different but i don't know if that's just me having a false memory because i opened something else i'm not sure but it feels very very papery yeah just paper really cool okay so we've got the key ring so because these sets come with so many keys you get a key ring to store them on which it's fun. This is, um, not only is this cute for display because this is actually really cool. There's holes on the back so that you can have it hanging on your wall. So you can use this as a little display shelf. I wish that these would come out so I could keep two Cleo dolls on display in here or something if I was going to use it for that. And I think the gimmick would be really, really fun, especially for kids, which are the target audience for the dolls. Um, even with like the key gimmick and everything, I think it would be very fun to like store your little treasures in there. So very cute. Not super useful for me. I wish there was an option for me not to have the lockers because by the end of collecting all of these, so far there's three lines that I believe have five or six characters each. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going to end up with a lot of these lockers. And they are quite large. All right. <gasps> Cute! Okay, so we have her second pair of shoes, which are really cool. They are clear bandages for the actual boot, and then the bottom are little cats. I don't know what um, goddess or god this cat is supposed to be. Specifically, the necklace is throwing me off, but it's beautiful. So I don't want to just guess best or best at um, based on it being a cat. Like, it could be another one. I don't know. Um, and then we have another key. And um, I can't actually tell what that one's supposed to be. It's probably supposed to be the clear key. But, like, watch. We'll use the silver key. Shh. Don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. So you can get in there. Okay. So let's see. These shoes are so amazing. These shoes are amazing. These are very Gen 1 to me. I don't know. Uh, let's get in here. We've got the accessories. So... We have this really nice little eye, and I believe this um, handle style was used in G1 at some point, right? Just the really cute twin-headed snake. And then, oh look, if I didn't know any better, I bet that says Cleo. This is very cute. We've got hieroglyphs, hieroglyphics of some sort on the back. And then this really looks like it opens, but I don't actually think it does. Oh, it does! Whoa! Okay, so she actually has a purse that opens that is so cool. Really uncommon for dolls to have purses like that, and I love it every time. And then we've got this little cat-headed, I think it's a lipstick? Yeah, ugh, golden lipstick, just like the doll has. That is cool. That is really fun. And I love this. This is an awesome accessory. Would not mind seeing this mold reused, honestly. That is cool. And then we've got a little popsicle with little bandages around it. I wonder what the bandages are. Are they fondant or something? And then we've got a little pencil. Could, this could be like a makeup pencil or it could just be a pencil pencil, but you can use it for anything. And it's got a bandage motif all around. Really cute. Okay. Love the accessories. And it looks like everything would fit in here, but I mean, hopefully she's not putting the popsicle in here. Um, it's a bit difficult to open just because of the... First of all, I have adult-sized hands, but also because of the handle. But okay, so you could put the popsicle in there. I'm not going to because it's going to get all melty in there. I'm kidding, but yeah. And it's slightly see-through, which is really nice too. I love this. This is awesome. Okay. So our next key. Did we get another key in there? If we did, I set it aside. Oops. <laughs> okay. Let's just use this one again. And now we're going to go for the orange box. Because I assume this is the last one. I don't know. All right. Let's see what's inside. Oh, also, before I forget, you can actually take this off. Like it really just pops right out see 
and it makes it where this will be see-through so you can see your doll through which I think is really fun that they provide that option I just really like the different little details they put on the cardboard I think they're really cute okay here we go we've got a second outfit so let's see <gasps> whoa okay so we've got a first stall i believe is what you would call this and it's got this triangle these are um like sprayed on i think i'm not sure this is beautiful and the faux fur is extremely soft and then the print inside is really cool they are hieroglyphics so i don't think they're i mean they're definitely not actual hieroglyphics some of them might be but like clearly that is not but they're meant to look like hieroglyphics so that's really cool actually very cute and then the next one we have cute so this top wow this is pretty and the tassels <gasps> this is one of the coolest trims i have ever seen on doll clothes this is cool and it's so well done wow okay so this is a little like i don't know what to call this it's gathered in it's a halter top it's just the shape is really interesting like it's beautiful and this is also meant to be hieroglyphics i think this might actually spell something in some way because I don't know. They don't look like they're monster highified. This is gorgeous. And then we have this one. Oh my god. Beautiful. I believe these are supposed to be palm fronds. Wow. And there's a little ribbon hanging down. And that would be the side of the skirt. Really cute. And we've got that like lapis color, of course. And then we've got... Our last key was actually the clear one. So clearly I made a misstep somewhere in our door opening journey but that's fine so um i'm starting to think the bottom one was probably the last one we were supposed to open because it's not the outfit but that's okay that is okay this is a really cute key i really like this one because the last one is the one that you don't need to reveal because you wouldn't need to reveal it right like you know which one it is um so they don't coat it in the paint and then we have this one so this is probably the second one you were supposed to open this is yes this is the accessory i'm the most excited about so she's got this like I believe these are called turbans, like an old Hollywood style turban. This is really cute. I love the little scarab on the front and the way it's got like the extra fabric to look like it was tied there. And it's got this beading on the outside. Of course, it's just sculpted into the plastic, but very cute. And then there's a little knot on the back. I'm so excited about this accessory. It's very, very different from Monster High. And I love hats in general on dolls. I feel like we don't get headpieces very often. Monster High, you get a lot of headbands and things like that but i want more hats let's I love hats oh wait why were there two of these in here yeah i definitely messed up the order i was supposed to open these huh interesting i was not expecting that uh and then we have this necklace so what do we have there is that meant to be a little scary oh it's a canopic jar i think is this supposed to be her heart jar in the g3 lore Cleo's heart is in a jar, and if she gets too far away from it, she gets, like, woozy. I don't know. Does she, like, die again? I have no idea. Um, but that is really cool. It's like a Magical Girl's soul gem. I find that to be a really cool uh, thing that Monster High made up. It's really neat. Uh, the Monster High team. And then we have this little gem here, and I love the necklace. This is really cute. And then we have her earrings. So, hmm. Not 100% sure what the motif is supposed to be. I'm definitely seeing the eyes. And then we've got fringe. These are really cute earrings. And yeah, so those are all of our accessories for Sculptured Secrets Series 2 Cleo. So we have two pairs of shoes, as she's wearing one. We have two bottoms. We have two tops, which we haven't even gone over the tops that she's wearing. We'll get to them. And then we have this first stole. We've got all the little accessories. So we have three small accessories. We have uh, the pencil, which I assume is meant to be like an eyeliner pencil or something because, or lip liner maybe, um, and the lipstick, and then also this uh, popsicle, <laughs> and then the purse, earrings, and turban. All right, now it's time to take a look at our Sculptimate Secrets Clio base doll, as well as the accessories that she is currently wearing. So I am so in love with this Clio doll. I think this is so cool that the designers are already experimenting so much with the core looks for the dolls. I feel like in Generation 1, and this isn't an insult by any means, but with certain characters, you didn't really get a whole lot of experimentation with their looks. There weren't really radical differences usually like it would be really cool if a character had a different hair pattern if she had stripes in her hair or like bangs when she didn't normally have bangs or vice versa so it's really really cool this early in the line to see a cleo doll with just completely a completely different hair color like this is the color of the streaks in her hair but it's her entire head 
Isn't that so cool? I think that is absolutely beautiful. And also the makeup is very different, but it's so Cleo at the same time. <gasps> she doesn't have a face gem. Oh yeah, in G3, I don't think she does. Well, now I'm blanking. Well, she doesn't have a face gem in this release or a monster ball, it looks like. Interesting. Uh, but I love this makeup looks. It seems like a lot of G3 clothes, if not all of them, are going to have this little eye design, which is really beautiful. And I love the way her eyelashes are too. And the way her wing stops. It's just really, really beautiful. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Unfortunately, we have to we have to get here. Her hair is polypropylene, which is a type of hair fiber. So Generation 1 Monster High, the majority of Monster High dolls had Saran hair, and a few of them had Kanekalon. When you get into Gen 2, you start to see polypropylene used, which, um, for example, the electrified dolls that have the really um, different feeling hair, they have polypropylene hair. Polypropylene hair is not my favorite. It's not as pleasant to style. It's very stiff. Um, you can see that it's it just doesn't lay super naturally. I think it has its uses, but it worries me because this hair fiber is known for not lasting very long and also for getting very crunchy very fast. And this particular Cleo, um, it feels extremely dry on her, um, which is fine. I'm not too mad about it, but yeah, I know that's a deal breaker for some people, so I think it needs to be pointed out. Um, gosh, I'm remembering what made me fall in love with G3 in the first place because Cleo was... Um, the first one that I reviewed. I love her eyes being blue. It's so cool. Look at her face. She's so pretty. She's so pretty. Sorry, sorry. I had to get back to that. Um, I do really like the delicate tinsel going through her hair. It's really pretty, the gold tinsel. Ooh, there's a lot on the back. I guess it's coming up. Yeah, look, it comes out of the middle. Beautiful. I love the tinsel. And it's the, it's the good quality tinsel. It's not the really terrible tinsel you sometimes see in dolls that really causes problems. This can still cause problems, but it's a lot better, in my opinion. And then she has a ton of hair on her head, which is very nice. Yeah. So there was an interesting thing with Generation 3 Cleo, where the original Cleo actually has really, really soft feeling hair. And everyone was like, what the heck hair fiber is this? And it turns out it's polypropylene that just had either product or like some kind of special chemical treatment done to it. I don't think this was treated in that same way, unfortunately, because I actually don't mind Generation 3 Cleo's hair in general. I think it's actually very soft. Anyway, this is her top. This top is so cute. So we've got the bandage print top. It looks very similar to the Gen 1 bandage print. It's very nice. I like the darker, like, orange bandages that are occasionally showing up in there. It makes it look a little bit more, like, aged and real and then i love the sleeves generation three gives us really cool sleeves and then oh my gosh take a look at these sleeves they're so cute they're made out of this really interesting orangey gold mesh fabric it's a really cool color i really really love it and it just looks gorgeous and this top is really well done and like really high quality for what it is and i think that's awesome and then everything continues on to the back and it velcros shut and then she has these high-waisted shorts. It seems like uh, Jet 3 Cleo is a high-waisted shorts wearer because there's been there's going to be several Jet 3 Cleos with high-waisted shorts now. I'm not mad at it, though. I think it looks really cute. And they're very nice. Like, on the sides, they're cinched, gathered, I guess, which is really interesting. The material that it, they're made out of is this, like, cellophane type of material, which is not my favorite. I feel like it's very, like... Halloween costume and not in a good way um but I think these actually look amazing I think this material was the right choice for these um usually I would not be I would be like oh this material sucks and it's cheap and it's terrible but in this case I love it good job good choice it looks great I love these shoes it seems like Skultimate Secret series 2 most if not all of the characters have shoes like this and I love them they're really unique and interesting they are meant to look like something akin to gladiator sandals I think which really fits for an ancient Egyptian character like Cleo because to be clear ancient Egyptian people and ancient Greek people like interacted a lot so motifs kind of mixing and matching makes sense um if these weren't popular in ancient Egypt too I have no idea I wasn't there <laughs> um but I really like these I love the like extra laces up top they look like that like squarish type of lace material that I really like actually and this is just really pretty I love the burnt orange color and I think it really matched as well with the gold that it seems like some kind of airbrush to make it an ombre effect it's absolutely beautiful I can't actually tell what color these were originally <gasps> oh were they originally gold Wait, no, they're originally, wait, but they wouldn't paint the inside, would they? But look, they're, I'm confused because they wouldn't paint the inside, but the sides being orange tells me that it was probably orange originally. I have no idea. It doesn't super matter. Anyway, let's zoom in on the 
bottom. So we have a little gem here, diamond cut or brilliant cut, and then these little wings. I'm not sure what these are referencing, but again, if they are ancient Greek, it does check out. And then on the shoes, once again, we've got the hieroglyphics. Look at that. That is so cool. And they don't look like they're Monster high fi They look like actual hieroglyphics, which is really interesting. And then on the bottom of the shoes, we have little jewels that are hiding in bandages, which is really fun. And I love that the bottom of a lot of Gen 3 shoes have really cool designs like that. It is so much fun. All right, now I'm going to switch her into the second outfit, but Skultimate Secrets, the purpose of it is that you can mix and match. So it's not like technically the second outfit, but you know, all of the second outfit pieces. Okay. Okay, so it. this outfit is a disaster. <laughs> like these pieces do not go to well together, but I wanted to show what they all look like on since this is the second outfit in the packaging. So um, <laughs> I'm going to change her out of this in just a moment into like a combination that I really like together. So this is what our Cleo doll looks like. She has her turban on. And the reason I say this is probably meant to be more old Hollywood is because it's the shape of like very old Hollywood style turban. I know turbans are not something from old Hollywood, like they have existed for a long time. Um, but also the stole is what makes me think like, yeah, that's what they were going for, which I really like. I think that's a really interesting sort of thing for Cleo. I think she would absolutely wear that Gen 1 or Gen 2 or Gen 3. And then she's got, okay, so first of all, the earrings. This drives me nuts. It happens a lot with dolls, especially when the earrings aren't packaged on them, where they didn't sculpt them where they'll lay correctly so you see how they like fan out like that it's because when i don't know like it's just a sculpting thing so it's kind of irritating but it looks fine like it's not that big of a deal they are very very cute earrings though and then i really like the stole i just have her kind of pinching it between her body and her arm but i'm actually going to take it off so we can get a closer look at the other pieces this piece is gorgeous i'm not sure how i feel about the halter being black the string but it works i'm not offended by it or anything it's fine and the top is just absolutely beautiful but and this is a major flaw it's clear that they didn't intend for this to be a second outfit by any means it's just supposed to be pieces for you to mix and match with but she comes with two pairs of high-waisted bottoms she comes with high-waisted skirt and high-waisted shorts and this really cute like belly shirt with a tassel so the it gets interfered with by the high-waisted pieces. That's such a shame. Not a fan of that. I love this skirt. I think it is beautiful. I think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous skirt. I love the colors. I think the color scheme really looks like amazing. Really, really nice piece. And then, okay, so I showed you these shoes earlier and was praising them, but I actually forgot to look at the bottom of the shoes. Love the little tie of the bandage here. They're just really cute. That's what they look like on. But check this out, ready? Bam. That is so, so cool. So, so cool. Okay, now I'm going to attempt to put together an outfit that I like for her. All right, so this is the outfit that I put together. I wanted to incorporate a lot of gold because the turban is my favorite piece, but honestly, I think this looks better without the turban, but I'm leaving it on. So my problem is that my favorite pieces, I mean, I love both of the tops. They're both my favorite pieces, but I really wanted to use the top this top because I feel like it matches better with the turban but I don't know I just couldn't get it to work so because of the high-waisted situation but as more Monster High Gen 3 dolls come out I will have more clothing to mix and match with and also I have not opened my Generation 3 I don't know why I said G3 <laughs> my Skultimate Secrets Cleo from the first line yet so I might get some cool pieces that I can use with this doll as well mix and match them together I'm not sure um but I really like this outfit like ignoring everything else, this outfit is actually really, really cute. Do I think this top and this skirt match together perfectly? No, but I think they look really cute together. I think they're awesome. I think they're both really strong Cleo pieces. And then I went with these shoes, even though I super like these ones, these are cat themed, so sold, I, that wins. <laughs> this is a really, really beautiful Cleo doll. I think this one is incredible and I love the mix and match clothing. I almost said mechanic like a video game, but um, gimmick? I don't know. I just really like that there's extra clothing because especially when I was younger, buying Monster High, that was so fun for me. And as an adult collector, I also really love it because it gives me more like photography potential, more display potential. It's just more fun. And this doll, by the way, retails for 30 US dollars, which I find to be such a steal 
I, I don't understand how Sculptimate Secrets is $30. I don't. They're awesome. I do wish, though, that either instead of this big locker thing or instead of all the keys in the key ring or just something, instead of something, we could have doll stands. Um, I have her on a doll stand that I just use in my collection, but, you know, I'd like her to have one. I also totally forgot I wanted to see what the stole looked like with this outfit, so let's try it together. Also, you can really see why I don't like polypropylene with the way the polypropylene is interacting with the outfit as I'm trying to put this on. Just the way it, it doesn't look like hair. Okay, anyway. Yeah, I like the stole. I think that helps sell the turban better. The turban is just such an awesome piece. It's so beautiful. And I love that Sculptimate Secrets Series 1, they also like all have cool hats. So it's really great. Okay. Now, we are done with Sculptimate Secret Series 2 Clio for now. We will be comparing the two a little bit more closely at the end of this video, but now let's move on to the Monster Ball. We have arrived at Monster Ball Clio's portion of this review. I'm so excited about this. I am so curious about this doll. I have been really, really excited about her ever since the first photos of her dropped, and I'm so glad she's finally in my hands so that I can, like, take a closer look at her and get her into my collection. She's really really cool i just find her so beautiful and interestingly this doll also retailed for 30 dollars. we'll see if i think that's like fair compared to Sculptimate secrets clio but also just fair in general compared to other monster high products so uh let's get started as always we are going to start with the face and i picked out her face in the store like you can actually see her through the box so um i really like her face this doll in particular just really stood out to me. I thought she was so gorgeous. Again, I love the fact that she doesn't have like fully black pupils. She has blue pupils and her eyes are just very pretty. I love the little shines in them. And her makeup is very, it's very like stamped on, but I really like how that looks. And I'm so grateful that it is not low pixelation printing. Oh my God. I'm so glad the Monster High designers are fighting for that not to be included in Monster High Generation 3. And I love that she just has a simple lip look, but then they put that little line through it. It's really, really cool. I don't know about that pink color lip. Like, when I look here, I'm like, that doesn't really match. But when I look at the overall look from far away, I am not drawn towards the lips at all. So it, they do the job. They do the job, and they're gorgeous. And then these are the earrings. So let's get close and see what's going on with these. Looks like we have some kind of interesting motif. What's going on? I'm not sure who that's supposed to be. Very interesting. We've got some kind of little icon in there and very nice little triangles. I love the thing that leads to the post. Sorry, I don't know your ring terms, but looks really good. And one of my favorite things about Generation 3 in general is that they have these really cute, like, big ears that stick out, and Cleo, I feel like, is one of the best. Like, even though she doesn't have monster ears, I just think she looks so cute. And then I really love the shape of her hairline. I think this is something to look out for when you are picking out your doll in store, though. Like, make sure the hairline looks pretty even. I think mine looks really good. I actually did not look out for that, though. But it looks amazing. I love the different colors in her hair. So you can see that lighter blue is either very similar or identical to the color in Sculptimate Secrets Cleo's hair. And it's just beautiful. I love, I love that deep blue color and the golden tinsel as well. And she's got this big hair cuff here, which also has hieroglyphics in it. And there's four letters again in the hieroglyphics, it looks like. So I think that probably is meant to be Cleo again. But I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that those little, like, hieroglyphic activities that you do in elementary school where you, like, pick out the letters of your name and draw them or whatever are not actually accurate to the language at all. Because it was a symbolic language, not letters. But I don't know. Maybe this was some later thing. No idea. Um, she has a good amount of hair on her head. Like, a really good hair amount of hair on her head. But, of course, the curtains finally closing. I have to say it. She has polypropylene hair. It is very soft. It's not as soft as the original Generation 3 Cleo doll, which is interesting because it looks like the same blend. Um, it's very dry on the bottom, but the rest of the hair feels very nice, so I do think it's that treated polypropylene again. Please switch to Saran, please. If you're watching this, please, 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 please. Okay, anyway, moving on. <laughs> Let's take a look at this dress. I love this dress. I'm really curious if this is two pieces or what, because I actually think it might be. If it's not, you can easily make it two pieces. But let's look at it all together, and then we'll see if this black layer comes off. So it's really, really pretty. It definitely looks like a homecoming type of dress. To begin, let's take a look at the extra accessories that she has on top of her outfit. So she has this necklace with a red gem and two blue gems. Love the painted detail. Really, really appreciated. I can see that the extra budget 
that was a lot of good this doll because of the five dollar price increase was actually used um with things like this just the extra details i really appreciate and then she has this belt it's got triangles sculpted in or like a zigzag line i should say and then this little scarab which has painted details i love it i love it really really cool and then i think this is either like a completely separate piece or it's just like an overlay to the actual dress that's attached. I'm not sure. We will see. But there's this really cool black see-through material with golden dots all over it. And there's also little shine dots on the dress. So they actually look like they go together, which is very pretty. Really, really good fabric choices on this doll. I really like it. So, let's see. I don't know how to describe this thing. It's like a cover-up? Like, what is this? I don't know. But anyway, there's this little area on top of each shoulder that poofs out, which I think is extremely adorable. It's actually hard to see with the hair, so I appreciate that they did it at all. And it comes down here. It looks like it's just very, like, open here, just a big open sleeve hole. And then, so it's, it might be like a wrap of some sort. No, it's got, interesting. So it's open here. It closes here. There's a waistband sort of thing. It's not, it's not actually a waistband, but the fabric is gathered here and they've left the raw edges sticking out to give it that extra ruffle which is very very cute i know it's hard to see and then it's open at the bottom and there's several tiers so you've got this one tier that is shorter you've got the medium length tier and then the bottom tier and this almost almost would be considered a high-low dress but i don't think it is i'm not considering it a high-low dress because i really like it <laughs> um it's just very unique. It's very interesting. And then underneath there, we've got a little mini dress. And I think it's a separate piece. I'm so hopeful that it is a separate piece. I really hope it is. We are going to check on that later. Um, but for now, I don't really know how to describe the dress much. It's blue. It's it's all the way printed throughout. It's got a lot of different symbols on it. It's, oh my god, it's so cute. Look at the scarab print there. Beautiful. This is really pretty. Looks like it might be... Um, slightly asymmetrical with the cut of it too but it might just be the way that the doll is currently wearing it not sure and then I saw this when I was unboxing the doll and like was so excited she's got this little snake wrap bracelet and the eyes are painted that is such a small detail I love it I love it and the snake is actually fully like separate like it's not all sculpted together and it's made out of a really nice rubbery material this is super cool I feel like you could use this for other areas of your doll as well like I almost want to put it here instead of the hair cuff really cute and then she has this little ring okay what have we here it's rubber banded in place and i recommend you leave those rubber bands in place if you get this doll and yeah we've got several different symbols on it very interesting i wonder what it means i don't actually recognize all of that very cool all right and then i'm gonna put her back on the stand for the record she does not come with a stand unfortunately um that's another thing i really wish that these came with stands it's almost a standard at this point with dolls that are above 25 dollars. and monster high gen 3 even though monster high gen 1 actually like was the thing that made stands kind of standard even in play lines so it's very interesting that monster high gen 3 doesn't have it but i think they wanted to put more of the budget towards the doll, doll quality so i can i can forgive it Okay, these shoes are awesome. Cleo is getting the best shoes in Generation 3, I think. But I also, um, the outfit sheds quite a bit, just so you know. I'm sure it'll stop doing that after a while. Um, Cleo's getting the best shoes. To be fair, these are the two newest Monster High dolls, like, newest Monster High releases that I've actually unboxed. So maybe it's just that the newer Monster High dolls are getting better shoes. I don't know. I really love the color scheme. So we've got the little eye motif with the little swirly. And check out that blue color with the brown and the lighter blue it's really really pretty and i love that the bandaged foot is on like prominent display i think that's very very cute too and look at the little cobra heels awesome they're in their little like i mean iconic cobra pose i don't know we've got little sand blocks here these are very very cute very simple but very monster highified oh nothing too special on the bottom just the rest of that brick texture but i really appreciate that they do that at all that is very thoughtful. And then, okay, before we reveal if she actually has a mini dress, let's go over the accessories. So first of all, this accessory is so nice. It's a little cupcake stand and it's very Cleo. The cupcakes all have, I mean, do the, wow, the bottom ones do too. All the cupcakes have little pyramids on them. They're purple and blue. And I think purple is a good color choice to like match with Cleo, but not be exactly her colors. And the cupcake wrappers are gold as well. And this is a really elaborate piece, but 
the play value of it is not great. It's great for photography. It's great for setting up a scene, but you can't actually take these off. I would think at least some of them would come off, or even if all four of them came off at once, that would work. But it's a bit disappointing that they don't. But it's a fantastic piece, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just, as a kid, I had a My Little Pony little cake stand thing. It, the cake stand was attached to a playset, but all of the cakes actually came off, and it was really fun. I remember just enjoying those so much. And even when I got rid of, like, all of my My Little Pony accessories, I kept that cake stand and all the cakes because I thought it was so cool. And then we have this photo, which I pointed out earlier, and I love it. I wish Frankie was in it because there is a Frankie in Monster Ball, and they look so good. I will leave that up to you guys to go find, but um, allegedly there's a Frankie doll, and... Oh, they're all so cute. I think in this photo, Dracula actually looks the best. I only have Claudine and Cleo so far, though. Man, they all look really good. To be fair, these are probably like factory samples or something, or they just picked the best of the samples. And then it looks like we have another openable bag. So really love the colors on this again. I think the color choices have been really fantastic. So there's little snaps. Sorry, these are not my nails friendly. Okay, there we go. That is so nice. And we do have some accessories we could put in here. Well, I think this might go to the cupcake stand. Hold on. So her little compact absolutely fits in here. Very, very cute. Very nice bag. And again, I love the extra playability of the fact that it opens. That is awesome. Then she has this teeny tiny little pyramid compact. It's really cute. It actually latches shut really well. It's not popping. It is not popping back open. It's like absolutely not, Brooke. You closed me. I am closed. Okay. Ah, there we go. Oh, cute. So she's got red, blue, and lighter blue makeup. I really love that like deep royal blue. It's very pretty. And I love its prominence throughout this doll because mostly I feel like Generation 1 Cleo had more of a teal motif and I love this darker blue they're giving to um, Gen 3. Also the painted detail on this is fantastic. It's really nice. And then there's a little finger hole so that she can actually hold it. And then okay this I'm not sure about. Is this for the cupcakes? Like are you is it for like grabbing a cupcake? Or is this some kind of cosmetic product? Is it a butt scratcher? I don't know what this is. It's interesting though. It's very cute. I feel like if you're building like a salad bar <laughs> for your monster idols, this would be great. I am not sure what this is supposed to be because cupcakes are like individually wrapped. You're, you just grab them, you know? I don't know. Very interesting. Okay. And then my favorite parts, which I'm shocked are not just part of the outfit. I guess they're supposed to be part of a photo booth, but no, these are part of the outfit for me. So we've got this amazing halo tiara thing i mean this sort of like the rays of light coming out of the head is very halo i love it i love it i love the like look at all the details on this i also love the use of red the red details on this doll are very subtle i, I hope to see a cleo one day with like a ton of red on her i feel like that would be very cool um but this is just awesome how cool is this love it love it are these supposed to be anubis's ears by the way or are they supposed to be like wings i'm not sure and then we have the scepter. So we've got another cobra, maybe a hisset tease, maybe just a cobra, probably just a cobra. I love that the cobra has a little crown on. That is adorable. We've got a little finger holder. Thank you. Thank you for the finger hole because scepter accessories are really hard to put on. Even if you have a rubber band, they are actually extremely difficult to have the doll hold. And I love that he's like wrapped around the scepter. It's beautiful. And I love the painted details. I do wish that this snake had painted eyes. It would be easy for me to do. And I might actually do it. I don't usually paint accessories because I'm just scared of paint transfer, but I might do it in this case because I think it would add a lot. Um, but it's interesting that the bracelet has it, but this guy does not. And then there's a little jewel on the bottom. And then this fell out of the packaging and I think it's cute. So you guys should keep this if you want. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, now I'm going to put the scepter and the tiara on and we can do our final thoughts. I feel like hyperventilating about this doll. Oh my God. So uh, first of all, yes, this comes off which is amazing. So you get basically two dolls here, right? Like two, if you were to buy two of this doll and display one like this and display one with the this on, it's completely like such a different look. That is so cool. It's just one piece, but it's such a high quality, nice piece. And then underneath there's such a high quality, nice piece that you can't even really see because, oh my God, she's so gorgeous. So this is my new favorite monster high doll. Sorry, Gorganizer Draculaura. Um, wow. Um, one thing I will say that 
I find it weird that the headband and the hairstyle do not go well together. Um, they cause problems, but it does look cute once you get it on. But once I take this off, it's going to mess up that hair, which is going to be annoying to me. Also, the gold cuff in her hair. I really like that piece, and I'm glad we have it. But you, it doesn't interact well with the halo. I'm calling that a halo. It's called a crown, but like that's fully a halo crown. It's amazing. It's so regal. We never had a Cleo doll that was this regal. This is like actually ridiculous. I love it. I love it. And her scepter. I need to know who designed this doll and I need to like, I need someone to send me their address so I can send flowers to their home, like on a weekly basis for the next year. I still don't think that's enough. Are you kidding me? Like, wow. So uh, <laughs> that's basically it for this video. I was fully going into this video expecting to prefer this doll facially, but wildly prefer this doll and think this doll was more worth the $30 price point, but I was wrong. Um, <laughs> I mean, I really love both designs. They're both so different, but also so Cleo, which I love when designers are able to innovate on the character. And Cleo's very interesting because she's very, she still is close enough to her generation one character, like especially aesthetic wise, but she also like has some new things. Like I don't think gen one Cleo would have been wearing high-waisted shorts, but they really look good with her and they match her current personality which I think is awesome I don't think any g3 character should be expected to be like a monster high generation one clone like I don't I don't see that as necessary it's just really nice to see nods to characters that meant a lot to me when I was younger you know um and yeah I'm very impressed I definitely think both dolls feel worth their price point if I compare them to other doll brands sure those doll brands like stomp them into the like <laughs> stomp them into the dirt quality wise but monster high was never a particularly high quality doll brand although it seems to be heralded that way for some reason it's always been very design heavy the budget goes into the design and the artistry and the media for it and i think these dolls do that job i think skultimate secrets as a line is one of my favorite lines but i find myself having a lot of trouble coming up with like good outfits together but at the same time I would be irritated if there was one outfit that was perfectly curated and made sense together and then there was other pieces that like nobody's ever going to use because they don't go together they don't go well with the other outfit you know so like I like this I think it's a good happy medium and I think the main function of Skultimate Secrets is that it gives you more pieces to play around with especially these are fashion dolls right you can play around with the fashions and mix and match them. And I think the Skultimate Secrets dolls, like the base dolls especially, are some of the strongest design Monster High dolls. But um, this doll just won the day for me. I'm completely in disbelief at this one. And yeah, let me know what you guys think. Maybe you guys hate this one and love this one. Um, I, I super love both of them. I just think Monster Ball like, is my favorite for this line, which is very impressive because I, again, I fully went into this video thinking like Monster Ball's cute, but she's not going to be like super special. She's just going to be another like really pretty Monster High doll which Generation 3 has made a lot of, to be clear. Um, but, and I thought this doll was going to be like the absolute like standout 100%. So I, I was proven wrong here. And I'm really excited to add these to my collection and get them on display. And also to get the rest of my Monster High reviews going because I am behind. If you'd like to see more reviews like this where I review both dolls at the same time and like compare them and pick which one my favorite is, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Or if you want to see these separate because I assume this video is going to be quite long, completely understand. Just please let me know. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching for all this time. Bye!